ericmothethmother.com as a follow-up of the previous video I did earlier this morning. And here is the title. This video is going to be part two, right? What I want to do is take a look at the current charts and remember we are talking about the VIX being above the mid-teens and we continue observing that the VIX is trading at about 38 right now which is a big value for the VIX so we know that there's a lot of volatility which is one of the reasons we can see why the market was down 600 points at the open and in about let's call it three hours the market has been as high as let's call it 350 all in one day so as low as 600 as high as 350 give or take the reason being that we have an elevated VIX the market is sensitive to the slightest technical you know parameters on a small time frame as an example of this right now as I record this wanted to show you what I am seeing here as far as the Nasdaq futures are concerned there is a simple line here which I have drawn here in red and what I wanted to show here is this resistance right there was at the highs of yesterday's trading after this resistance here we saw the market plunge down 1500 points on the Dow so this drop here was huge now I might have to zoom in so we can see that a little bit better and what I'm getting at here is right now I am seeing the market hit this level twice it's not a good sign because it means that now we are more and more open to the idea that the market wants to show a multi hundred point drop and the reason I say this is we take a look here at the market right now very very volatile one minute it is down a hundred points the next minute it is up a hundred points over the last let's call it hour or so that has been the trend and again please don't get tired of me saying this it is because the VIX is above the mid teens and the level of difficulty is very high again in my opinion and estimation the best way to look at the VIX is pretty much a sign of the difficulty of finding the trend or the trend on a small time frame if we take a look at the Dow Jones hourly we can also see if we take this line here somewhere there which gave us the break this break brings it off the highs there we can draw our uniformity line like that now this is a big deal we have uniform activity rejection here off the highs there you can't see it but it's squeezed in in there and then we have that top right there in fact let me zoom in so I'm gonna have to delete some of this information so we can see it clearly all right looks like that and the line that I'm talking about is somewhere there right and what we see here is a break off those highs and again you can't see it very well but right there is a high uniform activity rejection here of those highs and we get a massive plunge here it's a huge drop for example this from this point here to the lows right there that was yesterday's trading session we were down as much as if we take the that high and that low market was down 1500 points on the Dow so we're talking about big numbers here now we've come back and hit this line twice 
not once but twice. Now given the VIX being above 30, well above the mid-teens, as long as we continue seeing the double top on the Dow hourly chart, given where the VIX is trading, right? as long as we continue seeing the double top, the risk is still to the downside here. That remains the risk. Because if we end up trading below 50, if we drop below 50, it's not a good sign. It's going to suggest to me that we might have the likelihood of another multiple hundred point move to the downside, talking hundreds of points lower. And as I stated in part one, what is now going to be part one is the same line that can bring the market lower by hundreds of points can actually be a buy point if and when the market moves above the resistance line and this becomes very tricky now if you believe in the theory of fractals and I don't even think it's a theory it's just what we learn from this is that things tend to trade as they do in big time frames they also do in small time frames now the reason why I say that is if I take a look at the Canadian market we can see that over the last couple of days so that's a TSX it has been trading well below the trap zone of 30.9 on the hourly in fact if we draw the line where it drops below 30.9 somewhere here since the drop guess I can do it so let's figure out where that drop becomes here this is where we drop below 30.9 on the hourly right we've lost more than a thousand points since then it's a big percentage drop and we continue trading below 30.9 if we take a look at the S&P 500 and consider that it has dropped below 30.9 here we know that as long as the S&P 500 is trapped below 30.9 on the hourly we are still looking at a market that has the risk and again let me qualify this by saying We've seen one market stay below 30.9 for a considerable amount of time, which is the TSX. S&P 500 needs to get out of this trap. Otherwise, the more it stays below 30.9, the more it is going to be squeezed lower. And I say this even as the market continues moving higher intraday. Remember, this is complex in the sense that we are trying to understand from a multitude of variables and a multitude of markets a multitude of time frames a multitude of factors very confusing and what makes this even difficult and that's why I say honestly if you want to do this correctly you have to consider smaller po position sizes you have to consider getting out of the market until things stabilize and you have to consider being very nimble because the complexity has just skyrocketed very confusing not for the faint of heart now so S&P 500 still continues to trade below 30.9 if you understand this you know that the risk is still for lower prices now and even as the market is moving higher you might see, notice here that we don't see any change in our line our uniformity resistance line on the hourly so if we are going to be true to what this is showing us assuming this continues to show resistance especially when it moves below RSI 50 
on the hour <laughs> well well okay let me put this another way on the hour the dow moves below 50 expect a big down hour down remember we've seen a recovery that has brought the market off the lows and this recovery here is when the Dow was moving above 50. I don't want to confuse you but if you've been following my work for a period of time you know that movement above 50 tends to bring about a big change higher and at the same time the equation is true because as you move back below 50 you're gonna see the exact opposite which is a big drop so let me conclude this video one more time we take a look at the Nasdaq remember we had drawn this line at the beginning of this video like that which is again still showing potential for resistance we have to be mindful of what happens when the Dow if and when if and when because we don't know if and when it drops below 50 on the hourly that will be for a big hourly drop and because the market is full of tricks we have to be vigilant for what happens when it breaks out above the line we take a look at the S&P 500 and again on the S&P 500 just like we've seen with the Dow futures there is a line right there that is still in play in fact if we zoom in we can see that the line continues to show potential for resistance and the last time we found resistance on this line was here now if this continues to be the case I would lean to a market that has a bad close on this day of big size talking about four five six seven hundred maybe more somewhere in that range hundreds of points lower because as we move below 50 we are gonna see if we move below 50 a huge reaction or move to the downside before I conclude one other observation that is worth taking note of is and I discussed this in the weekend video this is where the Dow closed on Friday take note of the RSI RSI was above 69.1 which means that right now what the Dow is doing this week as of right now it is moving below RSI level of 69.1 which means that there is high probability that we close at the lows of the week again now we are bringing the weekly chart which is very confusing again this is not an easy game there's a lot of factors here if we take a look at the Dow daily we can see the Dow daily is trading above 30.9 if it can stay above 30.9 it is start to re starting to recover but if it fails to hold 30.9 expect continuation of the downward trend and the reason why I say that is possible is take a look at the Canadian market from the daily over the last three four days since about there it has been stuck on the daily holding below 30.9 very complex science here so net net what I would say here is it would seem to me that as long as our hourly charts are showing the double top rejection the risk of this market dropping significantly is very high and the reason for that expectation is born from the fact that we have a VIX trading above the mid teens which means the market is absolutely sensitive to small time frames and in conclusion so I can end this is the reason right now 
we have to be sensitive for lower prices is based on this chart here as long as the market continues to show double top rejection so let me end the video right there this is eric Moad with mother.com just be careful out there this market is not a joke it can really move substantially higher or lower with huge huge leaps based on where the vix is trading eric Moad with mother.com as always good luck peace and blessings i am out but i shall be back I am out. Be careful. Be careful. Be very careful. Mwah.